Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to do a quick kind of 360 overview of the Azure Mech, the multi-access edge compute. So I want to talk about what it is, but really why do we have it? As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share is appreciated, and hit that bell icon. So I can think about organizations today. They have different requirements for private networking. Now we might think about, well, we have just regular Wi-Fi. But the challenge with regular Wi-Fi is when you think about those kind of 2.4, 5.6 hertz networks, they're very limited in range. Now I might have a very big facility. So I have a huge facility with various devices in that facility that want to talk to some network. This could be industry, it could be manufacturing, could be a campus, whatever that might be. But I also might have kind of large outdoor environments. And once again, I have kind of different types of machinery, sensors, wind farms, farming equipment, whatever that might be, that again wants to talk to some kind of private network. And when we think about these large scenarios, we get into these private wireless networks, private LTE, private 5G. As we think about, well, there's, there's some kind of antenna connections in these things that communicate that really enable these things to work. Now, these are kind of called small cells. You might also hear them called kind of cellular access points um, or RANs, radio access networks. So we can think about, well, we have these small cells. You might call them these kind of the, the cellular I'll do a C there instead, cellular access points, or again, the radio access networks. They're all kind of used interchangeably. So these are these things. So these are these antenna, but there are also other components that make these work. Now, as time goes on, we're seeing more and more of these components that make them work moved into software. You get, for example, VRANs, where I just now have an antenna and the actual bulk of the work moves into software. But the point is I want to be able to run this private network. Now if I think about this private wireless network, we, again we could use LTE, we could use 5G, but these devices have some kind of SIM in them. There's a SIM that are baked into a particular network. Now this has to talk over some spectrum. So there's some kind of communication, a spectrum used to talk to the small cells. Now, if I think LTE or 5G, the various telcos, telcos own different parts of those spectrums. Now, for something like LTE, there are actually three options. Uh, there's something called the CBRS. So this is the Citizen Broadband Radio Spectrum in the United States. So here I can kind of use that for free. What actually happens is my solution has to be able to go and talk to a spectrum access service that basically works to check, hey, look, other neighbors near me, I'm not overlapping. So I'm going to use the right frequency, the right slice to avoid conflicts. I'm going to have to have internet to talk to that. If I'm 5G, for example, well, then I'm going to talk to a carrier and they can license me part of that kind of spectrum that I can use, or I could go to the FCC and actually file for a license for a particular geographical area. I don't need it globally. I need a certain frequency, a spectrum to use for whatever the sort of land mass, my, my farm, my wind farm, my factory, my canvas, whatever that might be. So we have these components now, for a regular public 5G network or LTE, LTE network, we have a whole bunch of network functions to make that work. I can think about there's a control plane with a whole bunch of different services, um, authentication, network exposure, service discovery, policy. Then there's the user plane, actually services for moving packets, actually making the data work. Now, if I'm talking about a private 5G, private LTE network, not all of those things are going to apply. In fact, for the bulk of this, what we actually need is this mobile packet core. So what I require 
is this net, it's a network function, and I have to run this mobile packet call. So again, this is a network function. And this is going to work with these small cells to actually get the data and actually make it do something. Now this is a specialized network function. And there are many different ones available. Now there are more than just packet cores. I might have requirements for SD-WANs, I might have requirements for VPNs or firewalls. There's just a different type of network function. And there are different options available here. There are first party ones from Microsoft. You can think about things like Affirmed. You might hear Metaswitch. These are actually companies that Microsoft acquired and they have mobile packet cores. Then I can think about there are third parties, people like uh, Solona, um, Nokia. They actually go and make their own packet cores that work with their solutions. And, and there, are, there are kind of many others as well. The exact packet core you would use, you probably do not care. Whatever solution you leverage, they're going to have a packet core. Maybe it's a managed service provider and maybe they use the Affirmed or the Metaswitch. Uh, maybe they use Solona. It's just you generally will not care about what that mobile packet core is. You just care it's there. Very often, companies will package all of this together. They'll provide you the SIMs for the equipment. They'll provide you with these small cells to place. They may work with you to actually map out well, where should they be placed, what size do you need to cover whatever the area is. They may even work with you to actually get, hey, you need this portion of 5G to operate here. So they'll, they'll kind of bring all of this to you. Then the last step would be once you've got these packages deployed, well, I have to get this mobile packet core to actually bring it all and make it function. So these things will actually go and talk to my mobile packet core. What's it that? That's there for a reason. Why are we bothering with this private wireless network? Was well, because we probably want them to talk to some workload. So I think about there's some workload that I need close. That's the whole point if you think about edge. The whole point of the edge is, hey look, I need to be able to run some compute close to where I'm actually maybe got sensors. Maybe I need very low latency because it's, hey, running these metrics back, these signals, I need to respond super quickly because maybe it's a safety issue. Maybe it's just from a performance perspective. But I want these very close together. So the reason we have these edge solutions is so I can place my workload super close to the actual devices. So with this private wireless network, now I have my own network that is now talking directly to the workloads that wants to leverage it. So it's all about this ability to have this edge compute. So these services, these workloads are now available to all of these devices that can get the data, maybe it's IoT devices, within this close proximity. So where do I run these things? And well, now you've probably guessed, well, this is where the Azure Mech actually plays. That's the whole point of this Azure multi-access edge compute is to bring this together. And so I can think about, well, what is this? This is all built on Azure Stack. Edge Pro GPU. So it's a specific SKU. So it's the Azure Stack Edge Pro GPU. So when we talk about kind of the workloads, it does have a GPU in this box. So that's fantastic. When I think about the workload perspective, well, now we can leverage those GPUs maybe for video inferencing. I can actually make decisions. I can do local processing on that box. Again, from a speed perspective, I don't have to go out to the cloud to get the result to come back to me. Maybe before I send it to the cloud, I have to do some operations on it, maybe sanitize it, remove PII, whatever it might be, before I send it to the cloud. 
But additionally, this Azure Stack Pro GPU SKU, it doesn't have an FPGA, but instead it has a Mellanox card. And what that Mellanox card gives me is I get these two network accelerated ports, five and six. So that's SRIOV. So what's really good for a network accelerated port? Hey, look, I can plug in my small cells, my antennas, wherever that might go. Again, if, if, if I move into like this VRAN space, virtual radio access network, I really then just move to antennas and I'll have more and more network functions to do more of the functionality that the small cells do today. But this gives me these accelerated ports that I can plug network equipment into. So this now gives me a local platform on which, hey, I can deploy and run these mobile packet cores, but it's Azure Stack. So that means, hey, from a workload perspective, what do we have with Azure Stack? Well, fantastic. Yes, I can run virtual machines, but I can run Kubernetes. I can run IoT Edge that's talking to an IoT hub in the cloud. So I can suddenly run all of these workloads on my box. So I just have that. Now, if I think about Azure for a second, what is Azure? So we always say, well, Azure, okay, it's this great big cloud up here. And Azure comprises of obviously lots of different types of service and kind of management. It has all of these capabilities and it's in regions all over the world. And then on that network, you might also see things like Azure Stack Edge. So Azure Stack Edge zones, these are smaller deployments in kind of metro areas. So again, trying to get closer to that end user. But you have this whole marketplace in Azure. So now the idea is, well, in that marketplace, I can have vendors create solutions. So I can actually have these virtual network functions. So as a vendor, I can publish my mobile packet core. I can publish my solution into the Azure marketplace. As the customer, what's likely happened is I've purchased a solution for one of these vendors. So they've shipped me the SIMs, they've shipped me the small cells, now I need to deploy the packet core, this mobile packet core that brings it all together. I can literally go to the marketplace. I can click and it will deploy. Now what happens here is this is a Azure managed application. So when it does this deployment, it deploys into a special resource group. And what this actually lets it do is the vendor actually has kind of this maintenance ability, this management for the things in the resource group. Now what it actually does when it deploys, you've probably guessed by now, well, it deploys actually onto my Azure Stack Edge Pro GPU. That's how I get the mobile packet core. It's deployed through the marketplace and gets deployed onto my Azure Stack Edge Pro GPU. So now I have the packet core, but again, because it was deployed as this Azure managed application, that vendor can take care of the ongoing management, but it is cloud managed. Now it may be a separate portal, depending on the vendor I use, they may have their own portal. Um, like Solona has a portal, um, Nokia has their own portals. I can now have this solution, but it's all cloud managed. It was super easy to deploy, and it's just there. So that gets me my private wireless network. They ship me my SIMs, they ship me my small cells, my RANs. I've deployed my mobile packet core running. I've got these nice Mellanox accelerated network ports, which gives me my SIOV, so I get phenomenal throughput, low latency to operate this. It is virtual. So the benefit here, again, as we start moving, for example, the RANs, well, now we can maybe even dynamically scale. We can adjust based on what we need. It's easier to update these things. But remember those workloads. Well, then you can layer on top of this things like Azure Arc. So remember, Azure Arc is all about bringing other types of service 
to my on-premises environment because, hey, once I have this Kubernetes managed through Arc, it can then layer on top of that lots of other things. There are data services, machine learning, app services, all just get deployed on top of that CNCF compatible Kubernetes environment. So what I've actually done now is, yes, we have this Azure Mech that is the platform. It provides the platform for running my private wireless network. It encompasses, gives me this complete solution. But I have Azure Stack Edge Pro to also run different workloads that again, yes, this is cloud managed. So too are all of the services that I can run. I get all of the different benefits of Azure, for example, policy and security and defense and tagging identity, in addition to all the different types of services. So it's giving me that consistency. So yes, we get those edge capabilities, putting the workloads close to all of those devices, and I get all of those abilities of Azure on-prem through that kind of integration with Arc as well. So that was really it. I mean, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. The whole idea of Azure Mech really is, is this cloud management providing a platform for my private wireless network. Again, private LTE, private 5G. I'm working with a partner that are going to help provide the small cells, the SIMs that are baked into this network. Then through the marketplace, click deploy. It's going to give me my mobile packet core and maybe other specialized network functions depending on my requirements. But again, cloud managed. Because it is an Azure managed app, the vendor maintains access to this special resource group so they can maintain this for you. And then, hey, I want workloads close to this as well. Well, this is Azure Stack Edge. I can run VMs and Kubernetes and IoT Edge. And then once I kind of have Kubernetes here with Arc, Arc then lets me have Azure Data Services, Azure Machine Learning, Azure App Services, all running on there as well. So that was it. I hope it makes sense. Um, until next time, take care.